all those terms, we're going to do a little bit again here more. Okay. Um, we're going to say uh, to make a fraction in all those terms, uh, just uh, divide uh, the numerator, the numerator. And denominator uh, by factors. I uh, usually try the prime numbers if you are stuck. Prime numbers are. And what makes a prime number? Okay, so if you know your prime numbers, finding, um, bringing fractions to lowest terms is really, really easy because you can always divide by two, and then you always divide by three, and then so on and so on and so forth. As mentioned on your test, you're not going to break numbers, right? You're not, not going to know that 19 or 23 is a prime number, which they are, but you're not going to. We have to Jessica. What's a prime number? It's okay. I'll come back. That was a hard question. I don't know what a prime number is. John, that's not the hand. I'm gonna pick on you now, so I'm not gonna pick on you tomorrow. Go ahead. Um, it's a number that can only go into one and then. Good. So can somebody tell me the first prime number, please? Go ahead. One is not a prime number, technically. One can't be divided. Two is one. Two is correct. I heard somebody say three. Is four a prime number? No. Why is four not a prime number? Because you divide by two. You divide by two. Good. What is a prime number? What's the next one? Is five a prime number? Yes. Yeah, because five can't be divided. Right? Is six a prime number? No. Is seven a prime number? Yes. And so on and so on and so forth. Now, can, does that mean you can't divide by 4? Of course you can divide by 4, right? But 4 wouldn't be the first thing I'm checking. If I have like 10 divided by 8 as a fraction, I'm not going to say, well, let's see if they divide by 4. I'm first going to start 2, 3, 5, 7. Um, the reason you can do 10, because 10 is 2 and 5 together, right? So that's why you can divide by 10. Any other question there? Yeah, it is another yeah. one. Um, like 3 and 5, you can't divide by 5 by 2. That's true. The only good question. In order to be a prime number, you can only divide it by itself as one. So like, yeah, yeah, because like if you have eleven, eleven divided by eleven is one. That's true. And eleven divided by one is eleven. But that's the only two ways you can get eleven. All right. Okay. So let's put the pressure on here. Example one. So we already did some of this, but um, this is an important mathematical skill. I'll bring the lowest terms. Let's start with an easy one. We'll move up. A is going to say 18 divided by 20. Okay. Jessica, back to you. What can both 18 and 20 be divided by, and how do you know? Here's the conversion number. Good. Right, instantly. So you can say divided by two. Guess you're not look yet. You will be soon. 18 divided by two is. Okay. And 20 divided by two is going to be. Now, if you leave your answers 18 over 20, is it incorrect? To a math teacher, yes, it is. You will lose half a mark. Okay. If I say that, um, I don't know. I weigh 2,000 divided by 10 pounds. That's true. I weigh more than that, but 2,000 divided by 10, but it's, you should say 200 is what you say in real life. Right? So use the lowest term, the simplest term form possible. Okay, letter B. This is one that's a little tricky here now. So 
Societaire und in der Erde. Okay, looking at that question, you can do it in one step, but let's not do it in one step yet. Can somebody tell me the visual clue of what those can both be divided by instantly? Now, this is important for mental math. Uh, sorry, Bailey. 25. 25 will work, yes. Five will work too. Okay, the reason I want to start off with 25 is practically do it in one step. What's the visual cue that you divide both those by five? This is the important part. Before that's not in the hand. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's the lowest. Yeah, good. But how, looking at that, how can you tell that can be divided by five instantly, though? Like with no confusion. Not that there's the end and then zero or five. A zero or five. If you end with a zero and a five, they both divide by five, right? Which are exactly right, Bailey. They can be divided by 25, which is what I'm going to do. By the way, I'm very happy, Bailey, that you have your 25 tape. Time stable memorizer. Okay. What is uh, 125 divided by 25? Yeah? 5 over 4. Now, if you can't do that in your head in one step, if you're saying, oh my goodness, how did she get to 25 table memorizers in her head? That's fine. If we do it the other way, we can change this to 25 over 20, which is then 5 over 4. It's still the same, right? It's still the same answer. Okay, right, but if you can go directly to the final answer in one step, go ahead. You don't have to show all the in-between steps. Okay. I was doing a little fraction. Is someone okay? Why did you go to one? Oh, this is or, right? This was, this is if you couldn't see that you can divide by 25 instantly. You know what I mean? So if you had this, your C divided by 5, you would go here. That's just a slower way. I'm just showing the two ways. Yeah? Uh, on the test, do we would we have to change it to a mixed number? Uh, mixed numbers are coming next. No. Um, okay, let me talk about mixed numbers. In math class, improper fractions are better. In math class. Okay, when you are at home baking, you will not say I need five over two cups of sugar. You will say you need two and a half cups of sugar. But in math class, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, improper fractions are way easier to use. Okay, so we will be using improper fractions. That's what we want to do. I'm going to do one more for you guys to do that. I'm going to hit pause, and then I'm going to um, move on. Oh, actually, two more. I'm going to throw C and D on here. Letter C is going to be Alexandra, and number D is going to be Nicole. Okay, you'll be answering in front of the class, or trying to, anyway. C is going to be 9 out of 30. D is going to be 2,400 over 36. I'm going to pause. Okay. I should probably get to all this. 